Today we're going back to school. I know a lot of students are starting up school today and so yesterday we started our emphasis on revival and Sunday morning services and, and we, we are entering in the school of revival. And so in the school of revival, we're, we're studying the mathematics of revival specifically. And so yesterday was addition. And we looked at the, what is the re, addition of revival. And by God's word, we're focusing in on Matthew chapter 3 with John the Baptist. And, and seeing that the addition of, revi of revival is repentance plus confession equals revival. Repentance plus confession equals revival. That's exactly what we see from John the Baptist. And uh, we, we see things, and maybe you see things around you as well, uh, that are signs of God reviving people, God bringing uh, life back to somebody or consciousness back to somebody's spiritual journey that, um, that, was, that was dead in their sins. And, and I see a stirring among God's people. I see a stirring among our world that uh, people are being drawn to God. And I want us to pay attention to that. And maybe... Maybe God's drawing you to him in a, in a new way and, and in a fresh way maybe. And, and maybe he's reviving your faith for your, your relationship with him. And that's a good, good thing. And so in the days of John the Baptist, he came preaching a message. It was a really simple message that he was preaching, but it was very, very difficult to do. And we'll get into that. He says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so his message to the people at that time were, was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Savior is here. Jesus Christ is walking among us. We need to prepare ourselves. And as scripture teaches John the Baptist, that's exactly what his purpose was, was to prepare people for the Messiah. And it's amazing seeing John's life. He he, that's all he did was pointed people to Jesus Christ. And that's all I want us to do too, is that people should see us, should uh, look at us, should hear what we have to say and be pointed and directed to the Savior. And that's what our goal is in this world. And and so that's what he was telling them. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And, and it says, then all of Jerusalem and Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him. They were being baptized by him in the Jordan River and they were confessing their sins. And so there we see the addition problem that you have repentance and confession and together they bring revival. And so um, you need both of those parts for that too. We looked at uh, repentance and that repentance is that turn toward God to make a decision in your head, in your mind about who God is. And from that decision, when you see God as your savior, that changes the way you think, that changes the way you interact with people around you. And that's a change that all of us need to have in our lives. And the repentance includes confession. They can't be separate from each other. To repent is to confess because when we turn from our sins, we turn toward Jesus and we ask him to forgive us, we, we confess our sins, we confess that we are wrong, we can do nothing to make this right. God, we have wronged you, a holy God, and we are sorry for that. And repentance is more than just sorry that you're, you've gotten caught. Um, almost all of us, I'm sure, in our lives have been sorry that we got caught. And, and that's exactly, um, that's, that's not what repentance is. Repentance is way more than, God, I'm sorry I got caught and continuing to do what you're doing. Repentance is, I'm sorry, Lord, for how I've wronged you. I want to live for you. I want to live in a way that honors you. And this is exactly what John the Baptist was preaching. We see, though, that repentance and confession takes boldness and humility. To repent and to confess our sins takes boldness and humility. It takes humility for us to come to God and admit that we don't have it all together. It takes a boldness to turn away from Satan and turn toward Jesus Christ and say, Lord, I want to reject my natural tendencies to sin. I want to reject that. I want to live for you. And uh, it takes a boldness because it's hard. It's hard to turn away from our sin. It's hard to turn toward God. But with Jesus Christ, all things are possible, and we know that. And, and the same thing with confession as we confess. Um, confession also is to one another. You see here the believers, they were coming down to the Jordan. They were confessing their sins with one another. And there's power in that confession. James talks about us confessing to our sins to one another and praying for one another that a multitude of sins could be covered. A multitude of sins could be avoided when we confess our sins to one another. We have that account accountability for each other. And it was a it was a beautiful moment yesterday. We had we had people confessing their sins to one another and praying together at the altar, and and that is something we're so thankful for. We're so thankful for that life change. I'm so thankful at what God's doing in your life right now. The question is, how are you responding to what He's doing? 
How are you responding to the revival that he's bringing about in your life? How are you going to obey him? And that's what I want you to answer this week. As you read God's word, if you're not reading anywhere, I would challenge you to read uh, Matthew chapter 3 and then go back to uh, read Psalm chapter 51. Psalm chapter 51 is a beautiful psalm of repentance and confession from King David toward God. And it's, uh, it's exactly what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to repent, ask God to forgive us. And then as David said in Psalm 51, then when I am forgiven, when I am cleansed, when, I am created, when you're creating a new heart within me, then I will teach other sinners your ways. And that's exactly what this is. We're a bunch of beggars telling other people where to find bread. And, and, and that's exactly what we're doing. And so may God bless you this week. May he keep you and may he continue to revive your soul this week. Take care. God bless.